Welcome to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and today we are talking with two representatives from the Fairfax Food Council, Terry Siggins, who is the project coordinator for the Food Council, and Chris Garris, who is a programs director at Bright Pass and also this year's chair of the Fairfax Food Council. Thank you ladies so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. So I came into contact with the Food Council two ways because I sit on the board of Bright Pass, so I know Chris Garris, who actually invited me to the summit that you held last year, which was fascinating. It was my first interaction with the Food Council. It was it was enormously educational. You had a room full of people who were interested in nutrition and wellness and food preparation, where it interfaces with the school, where it interfaces with children. Mm -hmm. Give us a little bit of background on where did the Food Council come from? Sure. So in 2008, through the Fairfax County Health Department, they basically did a co comprehensive strategic planning process. And through that, they did um, what's called Mobilizing for Action Planning and Partnerships. So it's a MAP process. And they looked at um, identifying where health needs were in the community. And through that, the Partnership for Healthier Fairfax was developed. And they developed the CHIP, which is the Community Health Improvement Plan in September of 2013. One of the components of that Community Health Improvement Plan was healthy eating. So there was a healthy eating team um, on that, that CHIP committee and through that one of the goals of that team was to develop a food council and so in 2015 in the spring of 2015 we initiated a community food assessment and that community food assessment looked at three different communities in Fairfax County one being Mount Vernon Bailey's Crossroads and then the rest in Herndon area and those areas have been identified as high need areas in Fairfax County through the MAP process. And so that community food assessment went and did, we did surveys, we did um, stakeholder interviews, we did a healthy eating availability index in each of those areas. And out of that, that kind of gave us some guiding principles for the development of the Fairfax Food Council. So those three areas kind of overlap in my mind with mm -hmm. the areas where we have the most Title I schools. Mm -hmm. So there's probably some indication that there are populations of people there who have a number of issues that they're trying to overcome. Right. And it's not to say that Fairfax County, there aren't other areas in Fairfax County. Those were kind of just identified as higher needs than others. I mean, the unique thing about Fairfax County is what's different about us compared to like an urban environment or, you know, DC is that we have pockets right. in Fairfax County and they're often nested within say a really high income area, but you'll have pockets of poverty and people with special, you know, with identified needs in those areas, but they're nested in the context of, um, higher income, higher socioeconomic areas Well, I think well. we found that in Fairfax City. Mm -hmm. I know working with, you know, Bright Pass started out as a, as a food pantry, a soup kitchen 32 years ago, but within Fairfax City, people think we're very affluent, and yet mm -hmm. we serve the needs in Fairfax City. And so talk a little bit about, about how you find these communities that you're trying to serve with this kind of information. Well, um, a lot of the communities, the referrals come through Fairfax Coordinating Services, um, school social workers, um, nonprofits. So um, we, you know, we have families that it's very surprising to the community that their children are not. Um, don't have enough food on the weekends, or they can't provide a snack during the school day. So talk a little bit about Food for Thought. Well, um, Bright Pass, uh, five years ago, I had a social worker from Marshall Road Elementary uh, approach us and tell us, you know, we need to do something about this, and she was willing to work with us, and so we um, started a program called Food for Thought where we would go into a school and work with their PTA, with the principal, with the social workers, and um, help them find ways to get donated food in and um, distribute it to the children, of course, in a very private way. And uh, we also work with Food for Others because they can serve the Title I populations um, 
that is a huge, huge need. Right. And a school can't handle that. So they're able to um, bring in the donations and then funnel it back into the schools. And one of the initiatives of the Fairfax Food Council is to bring all these partnerships together. We're really excited. We have Rodney Taylor, um, the Director of Nutrition and Services for Fairfax um, Schools, and he is working with us with other nonprofits, um, social workers. Um, I'm trying to think who else is been um, attending the meetings. Food for Others, Bright Pass. Um, we so have, you have a lot, you have a large collaborator. Yeah, so the Fairfax Food Council is open to anyone, community members as well. Um, it involves business, we have businesses involved, we have nonprofits involved, we have faith-based institutions, we have a lot of government involvement as well. Um, the Fairfax Food Council right now is being funded through a grant through the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth, oh, okay. which is being housed within the health department. And so that was given to the health department for funding for the food council. Now that grant, is that a long-term grant or do you no. just have to, right? <laughs> going to be scrambling, 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 shaking the trees, looking to replace that funding. Right. We will be looking to replace that funding. That funding will end um, a year from this July. So we need to look at additional funding to, um, to support a staff person. And then also that funding is given to, we have three different work groups within the Fairfax Food Council, which stem from our community food assessment. So we have a food access work group, a uh, urban agriculture, which used to be called community gardens. Okay. Um, so they're now called urban agriculture. And we also have a food literacy work group. And each of those work groups, and that's kind of where we, where our projects stem from are those work groups. Those work groups are working on specific projects and money from that grant that we have funds those projects. So I can give you an example. Our food literacy work group right now is developing templates to be used in food pantry countries to educate on nutrition and healthy eating. So they've come up with, I think, let's see, I think we have four different templates that we've come up with. We just piloted at St. Vincent de Paul in um, Centerville uh, a day of looking at activities and recipes and, and ways that you can incorporate healthy eating into a food pantry food. Right. You know, but one of the, of one of the, the large area food banks, I don't know if it was capital area, but one of mm -hmm. them very recently within the last year had a policy where they're not going to take yes. unhealthy food anymore. Like no grocers or mm -hmm. people would get like no hostess Twinkies, no yes. ho-hos, no chips, none of that processed Right. Junk food. So Capital Area Food Bank is on our food council. Right. And they are very committed to looking at the nutritional content of their foods. So they do no longer accept like the extra Halloween candy after Halloween that people would donate to them. They've said, please take it somewhere else because those aren't the types of things that we want to feed our clients. And I think that's an important issue that you bring up is that we often think, oh, people are hungry. Let's just give them any type of food, and we know that health is very important, and what we eat and put in our bodies affects our health, and so that we need to be looking at the types of food that we're serving everyone, regardless Absolutely. of income. And so I think it's great that we have Capillary Food Bank and other Food for Others and other um, organizations that are really looking at how do we get healthier food into people that um, may not be able to afford it. So Chris, w what programs, uh, you know, Bright Pass has, has made some pivots recently from when they first started out as far as not just what they accept, but it's the use of grocery gift cards and programs like our daily veggies. Yes. And so um, we were trying to find other ways than just um, providing the traditional pantry foods for our families. They were coming to us saying, thank you so much, but I don't know what to do with this can of chili. And so we um, decided to take a step about five years ago to provide grocery gift cards. Um, it was a challenge getting our uh, community to understand how it was going to um, help families, because people do worry, where are they going to be spending that card? But we also provide financial literacy um, with the food gift cards. And so our financial mentors have told us how wonderful it is to not only um, have a family that is able to purchase their own kinds of items, but that they're 
learning how to budget and have some savings you know at the end of the day so it's been a very holistic approach but we've been really, really pleased with the results. Well, you know, you, food pantries can't generally take fresh items. So the thing about, so that's what to me was so remarkable about the Our Daily Veggies program is that you figured out how to provide fresh, fresh vegetables without mm. stockpiling them at a place where people have to go. You can't maintain that. We're not, you know, Bright Pass is not a grocery store. Right, right. and we also incorporate cooking as well where we'll have a um, healthy eating uh, workshop and our families will come with their children and then we provide them vouchers and we all walk over to the farmers market that's across the street and do a little shopping together. And is that what you and visualize as being one of the tenants or one of the, the real end goals of having a program? Would be the... Well just the fact that you're teaching people how to shop, how mm -hmm. to prepare food, that, that they should put great value in fresh foods over Right. packaged foods. And I think you, you commented about the fresh foods and I think that our pantries are doing a great job about trying to get more fresh foods and fruits and vegetables into um, the pantries. And so a lot of the pantries do, some do have storage and especially ones that are working with Capillaria Food Bank. Capillary Food Bank is doing a lot with fruits and vegetable deliveries in our area. So that's nice to see that change in our food pantries. So they've changed a bit on the way that they're structured. Um, some still have shelf sustainable. Well, doesn't it kind of change the interaction food. you have with people who donate food? You think about the Boy Scouts mm -hmm. who do their food drive every right. year and you can't do fresh foods. Right. I mean, it's very narrow. It's, so you're kind of changing the behavior or the way people who want to donate right. are doing it. And that's one of the initiatives that came out of the Healthy right. Eating Team was a brochure that was developed for food pantries to use with um, their donors. So enabled, enabling them to ask for certain types of foods that are more in high demand or healthier products. So we always talk about low sodium canned foods, um, looking at the sugar content in our fruits that are our canned fruits, and also educating clients about how you can go about reducing the sodium if it's not a low sodium product. So rinsing those beans, um, rinsing the, the fruit ahead of time so that you're not getting the um, salt and, and the sugar in those items. So these are great skills for anyone to have. So right. it's not just skills or knowledge for low income people to have. Quite frankly, most of us don't have that skill right. set either. Right. So when we come back after this break, we're gonna be talking with Terry and with Chris about ways that the Fairfax Food Council is trying to make our community a healthier place to live by making how we consume our food fresher and better for us. So join us after the break. for you. There's free food right there, junk food. You see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How are we doing? So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time!
Welcome back to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and today we're talking with Terry Siggins and Chris Garris from the Fairfax Food Council. Thank you ladies so much for being Great, here. Thank you. So you've got a year's worth of funding, you've yes. got a grant, and so what are your major goals? Where where are your resources being applied in the coming year? Okay, so well, one of the main goals of the Food Council is really to develop collaborative partnerships. So besides developing, there's a lot of collaborative partnerships within the county um, revolving around different projects, we have our three work groups that are working on specific um, projects related to our funding through the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth. So I mentioned that the Food Literacy Group right now is working on a food pantry pilot toolkit. And the purpose of that is to develop t um, tools that can be replicated at other food pantries related to food literacy, um, different healthy re recipes that can be included, and specifically um, focused on youth and families. And so we did a healthy eating, um, a healthy plate uh, uh, day at um, recently a couple weeks ago at the food pantry and we'll be looking at that data and then refining it and hopefully putting it in a toolkit that can be used by other pantries. Our um, urban agriculture work group has many projects going on. When a, we have a tool lending program so if anybody is interested in developing their garden, their community garden, and they need specific tools like a tiller or shovels or anything like that, they can go on our website and there's a Google form that they can fill out and have access to that tool shed. Is that open to anyone? That is open to anyone. To anyone, mm -hmm. all right. So so planting your tomatoes and beans this year, right. you've got tools. Right, the focus is really, the purpose was really community gardens. Right. Um, and so faith-based organizations, community organizations, but we're not, Limiting, limiting it to any right. particular group. Um, so we have that tool lending program going on. We also have, um, we also just recently awarded some money to three different groups within Fairfax County to work on their community gardens. And that was Herndon Environmental Network, which is developing a community garden, and also Riverside and West Lawn Elementary. So we're excited to see what they're gonna do with those funds. And we've um, partnered with um, mentors that are helping them with the, their gardens and we also have a garden workshop that's been developed by our urban agriculture group along with Virginia Cooperative Extension and they have six workshops planned in 2017 so the next one coming up is in July July 25th it's the edible landscaping workshop and so Corey Suter who is one of our co-chairs and um, has his own farm is going to be talking about edible landscaping and how you can plant certain things that will come back year to year and um, and then also have food for your family. You know, and there's and there's container gardening. Actually, in urban areas, mm -hmm. people are doing all kinds of things with container gardening, and I've, you, you see this on Pinterest a lot. Mm -hmm. The unique ways in which people are using recycled and repurposed material yes. to grow food yes. where they are, even in a city. Yes, and I think that's that's what our workshops are really trying to, to hit upon: are different ways that you can grow food and unique ways that you can do that. And um, that's one of the reasons that our community gardens workshop changed their name to urban agriculture too. Right. Was to it's be not more people with a yard. Right. So people right. with a balcony yes. <laughs> or space on the roof or whatever can right. do the same thing. Exactly. And we have a lot of apartment complexes and condos within Fairfax County and looking at how can people grow food in areas that don't have a lot of space. Okay. Spiral gardens is something new mm -hmm. that I'm learning about. Yeah, so I think my sister did that when she was in Santa Fe on her patio. It was kind of this tower thing and it had things yeah, concentrically. Sure. Yeah, yeah so my sister grew stuff on her patio in Santa Fe. Spiral herb gardens as yeah, well. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so. I knew about that. Yes, and then they're also looking at doing a garden and farm inventory of Fairfax County, looking at where gardens are located and identifying areas that may need more community gardens. So we have areas within Fairfax County that there's not enough community gardens for people to um, plant if they'd like. But this really is kind of a shift when we think about food. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, I grew up in the 1960s and 70s where people ate Captain Crunch and you know peanut butter and jelly on white bread and. A lot of us grew up that way, and people didn't talk about the connection between wellness and health mm -hmm. and what we were eating. Right. So this has been a major shift. It has, and I think we're, we're learning that food 
is you know so important to our health and when we we look at our health if we forget about food we can prevent a lot of things and we can manage diseases by looking at how how we eat and prevent diseases so I think it is an important aspect of that it starts with our children mm -hmm. yes right because the habits we form when we're younger are exactly what we carry with us th throughout life Right. And we're so excited to have Rodney Taylor, um, the director of food and services of um, the schools, because he is just making such a huge difference, and he's part of our council. And with all the partnerships, we we really are excited the changes we've seen already with having salad bars in the schools. Um, some of the high schools and middle schools now have rotisserie chickens and you know cooking up because he thinks it's so important to be eating real food not the processed foods absolutely yeah. and the exciting thing happening too with um, Fairfax County Public Schools and some of the other partners are is a summer feeding program which will kick off in June when school gets out where children have access to meals throughout the summer because a lot of children depend on those on the lunch program and the breakfast program within the schools. so when school gets out they're left with not having anything to eat. So they have barbecues at some of the summer feeding sites. Um, so you can take your family. It's only $2 for adults to eat, and it's free for anybody under 18. And really trying to make it a community atmosphere for um, the summer feeding program. We don't have the problem as much here as there are in the rest of the Commonwealth mm -hmm. of Virginia but it's food deserts, and that mm -hmm. is where people really don't have access to a grocery store. Mm -hmm. You find that a lot of, of low-income families are relying on Chipotle mm -hmm. or McDonald's because mm -hmm. it's cheap food, and that's all that is within walking distance of where they right, live. Right. You know, so in Fairfax County, I, I don't know how it, if, or whether you've mapped out whether we have food deserts, mm -hmm. but in places like Richmond, there are food deserts. Yeah. Well, there's we, some initiatives that are, are happening in the background, but it's just starting to happen, so we're very excited. We think um, in the future we may see a big shift in the county, and um, starting from having a farm that is part of a grocery store that's employing. There's just so many ways that um, it's called the, instead of having a um, golf course community, you're going to have a farming community, and we'd love to see that happen here. <laughs> so um, getting back to the food deserts, we don't technically have any what you would consider food deserts, but we also have issues related to food access, so transportation issues. So if somebody does not have a car or available transportation, the closest store might be the local CVS or the 7-Eleven right. next to them, and that's where they're shopping. So thinking about all those different factors that go into food access is something within Fairfax County. Our access group right now is working on farmers markets as well. So looking at where farmers markets are located, um, what areas are lacking in access to fresh fruits and vegetables at farmers markets, and also really letting people know about our SNAP matching program. So if you are on supplemental nutrition assistance program, which we formerly known as food stamps. Um, you can take your, it, we have four markets in the Fairfax County Park Authority um, farmers markets, and then Arcadia operates a farmers market in the Bailey's Crossroads area. You can take your SNAP card and you're matched for what you purchase. So if you purchased $10 worth of fruits and vegetables, it will only cost you $5. That's fantastic. Yes. What a great program. Yeah, and that's funded through um, a a grant through the USDA, and so we're hoping to get additional funds for the next year, next couple of I years. I think the to first lady, Arcadia Farms, mm -hmm. is what brought to mind. Didn't the yes. first lady launch some a new Virginia? They, they actually had mm -hmm. a going away lunch for her today. Arcadia did, mm -hmm. so she has been so supportive. Right, and they have a new website, the Nutritional Divide website that has all different resources now for related to Virginia specifically. And what is and the that, website? Is it VF? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably mess it up. Well, they can up, Google so, it. Yes. What would they Google? What would people Google to find it? Um, Virginia Nutritional Divide, I think. Virginia Nutritional Divide. That needs, that's and a conversation I'm not we sure, need to have. I'm not exactly sure about that, so I can look that up and get it back, yeah. get back to you on that, that. Those are the things, the conversations we need to have, and you're right. right. The First Lady did a lot to shine a light on kids especially showing up to school without breakfast. Right. 
and the impact that lack of food, la lack of nutritious food, mm -hmm. has on the learning capacity of, the, of children in our public school systems. Right, and I think all those social determinants of health are really important to look at. Um, you talked about the website. I just want to say we'll have a link on the Fairfax Food Council website oh, to so that website find it there. so people can find it. So there's that. a lot of, and that comes back to your um, mm -hmm. mission of being very collaborative mm -hmm. and actually working with in a collaborative way, all of these organizations that are working on some part of this. Right. You know, there's no one organization that's going to solve every issue related to food in Fairfax County. So it's really important that we bring about all the different components of our county. So not just government, um, but looking at businesses, looking at nonprofits, community members, and bringing all those ideas to the table. And each organization that's involved in the Food Council, um, they have a mission that's related to their organization. And so how that ties in with the Food Council, and they bring resources and talent with them to the Food Council to help us solve these problems. We have a very strong steering committee, mm -hmm. and um, at our last food summit, we had a nurse that's very interested in nutrition come up, and you know, she wants to join us. So it's just not um, nonprofits and Fairfax County; it's the community. You're welcome to come, um, come to a couple of our meetings. See if you'd like to join. Um, we'd love to have your voice. And all of our meetings are listed on our website as well and they take place at the Kelly Square Health Department offices. I know where that is. Yes, and so we have monthly meetings. Um, the best way to get involved is to come to one of our work groups. So you can go on our website, read about the different work groups and what they're doing and see what is of interest to you and all you have to do is show up to one of the meetings and we'll be happy to take your help. So, You know, and I think that's interesting too because a lot of times either people don't know or they, if they're not part of an existing organization, mm -hmm. they are reluctant to show up as themselves saying, I'm interested right. but I'm just here as myself. Right. We had, she just recently moved away, but we had a member of the food access group um, that had military family. Um, she moved into the area, was interested in the topic, came to our food access work group. With such a help, she put together a whole report for us because she had the time to do some research. Um, but she wasn't involved with any particular organization. She was just a concerned community citizen that wanted to come and help out. So. I mean, I think this is a topic of interest for people who are understanding the connection between social determinants mm -hmm. of health outcomes. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate the fact that you guys, both of you, are working so hard to bring more players to the table. And that's one thing I would encourage everyone to do is to look on the website for the Fairfax Food Council. Come to the meetings. Bring your best ideas. Bring your passion. Become an advocate for helping these organizations to bring better wellness and healthy outcomes to our community through better eating. And that is what you need to know.